All right. OK, next uh, we are going to uh, answer the question by shadowing. So what do we mean by shadowing? OK, so this is another mathematical slide I am uh, giving, right? This is uh, the second and the last uh, uh, mathematical slide I'm giving. And the shadowing lemma is a rigorous mathematical statement that says that for any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta, right? That's the typical calculus kind of uh, uh, statement such that if I have a solution VT that satisfies a perturbed version of a differential equation, so dV dt equal to f of v plus a perturbation term, right? That's exactly the kind of a butterfly control we are looking at. And the magnitude of the perturbation is less than epsilon, right? This is in the epsilon delta statement, right? So, so for any v, that satisfies a only slightly perturbed, epsilon perturbed equation. There exists another solution that actually satisfies the unperturbed uh, differential equation. And the difference between U and V, each satisfying a slightly different equation, is less than delta. OK, so, so this is our math. Let me put it in language. That's, uh, if I have an equation satisfying a, uh, if I have a solution that satisfy a equation with a slight control, right, with a slight perturbation, then the solution is going to be very similar to a solution to an equation without the control. Okay, does that make sense? That's kind of a translating the math into language. And uh, uh, you can prove this statement for an infinite long trajectory, Vs and Us, uh, uh, if you assume the so-called uh, uniform hyperbolicity. So that's a, a condition that's, uh, um, uh, that's like a, a class of ideal chaotic dynamical system. However, for many other chaotic systems, like the Lorentz equation, you can prove this for a very long t, although not uh, infinitely long trajectory. So this is an example of a set of shadowing solutions. So it, you see these as like a one object, but this is actually a collection of a hundred different trajectories, each trajectory labeled by a different color, going from a yellow, almost white, to dark red, almost black. So each different color is actually a different trajectory. And each different color trajectory also satisfies a different governing equation with a different magnitude in the perturbation uh, delta F. So the magnitude goes from uh, uh, zero for almost white to the strongest for black. Okay, what you can see is that uh, there exists, you can construct a set of solutions, although non-trivial, right? Uh, there, there are numerical techniques uh, to construct uh, these kind of uh, shadowing solutions. What I want to say is that there exists uh, the type of shadowing solutions that satisfies slightly different governing equations, but they don't diverge exponentially from each other, like for the initial condition case. Or, or, or like in the same initial condition. So, so this uh, is uh, videos of a set of uh, uh, solutions for, uh, for the Lorentz equation, right? In this case, the color actually denotes different uh, magnitude of perturbations. On the left, we are starting all the equations from the same initial condition. So you can see that uh, under different magnitude of perturbation, the trajectories becomes different pretty quickly. And uh, you see the butterfly effect, right? Uh, as the solution become different, uh, made different by the different perturbations, they diverge from each other exponentially. On the right, you see the shadowing solutions. These solutions again satisfy the same set of uh, uh, different perturbations, again indicated by color. However, as time evolves, they stay together, they shadow each other, right? They don't diverge at all. I mean, it turns out for Lorentz, you cannot shadow that for infinite time, but uh, it's actually very significant amount of time compared to the divergence uh, of the nearby trajectories. So, so uh, left and right are evolving actually at the same speed. So this is shadowing. So what's the consequence of shadowing? 
The consequence of shadowing is that, okay, uh, you can argue from shadowing that a butterfly cannot control the climate because if you have a solution V that satisfies the controlled governing equation, where the control delta F is very small, right? We are talking about a butterfly here. Then a shadowing solution would exist that satisfies the unperturbed governing equation. And the difference between the perturbed solution that has the control and uh, the unperturbed solution without the control would be very, very small indeed. Okay. And therefore, the statistics of the controlled solution V would be not much different from the statistics of the uncontrolled solution U. Right? So, Yes, a butterfly giving a tiny perturbation can make a difference in the statistics, but the difference would be tiny if the control is tiny. Right? That's the uh, logical argument from the point of view of shadowing. 